is my awesome illustration that I'm going to use to talk about work done and how to think about it. So this is a person and this is a, he's working out. All right. It's a person just, and it's the same person. Just pretend that the proportions are the same. Okay. So this is a person he's working out. And so he takes a dumbbell, a large dumbbell. And let's say this weighs, um, I don't know. He's, I don't know how strong he is. Anyway, weighs, it's, it's, it's massive 60 kilograms. Okay. And he takes that 60 kilograms and he lifts it above his head and um, he's kind of tall. And so by when he lifts it above his head, that is, he has lifted it two meters. All right. So there's two things that have happened here. All right. One is that he has done work, right? Work done. So he has literally done work on this dumbbell to raise it up. All right. Um, how much work he has done is the equation work done equals the force times the distance something has moved. And so we abbreviate that with by work equals F times D. All right. Now, so if we want to know the work, we have to know the force. Now the force, so this is the mass, but if you remember, F equals M times A or W equals M times G. So if we want to know the force of this thing, the first thing we need to do is we take its mass and we multiply it by G, which is 10 here on Earth. He's on Earth, in case I didn't say that. He's on Earth, right? And so the idea is that the force of this is 600 Newtons, all right? If you don't understand how I got that, go back and watch the unit one um, uh, equations video, please. All right. Uh, and then the distance moved. And I said he lifted it two meters, so he lifted it. Distance is always in meters, so it's 200. So he did a total of 1,200, and work is always given in joules. It's like energy, 1,200 joules of energy in order to lift that bar two meters up. Now, so that's the work that he's done. All right. The And the key to this is the so work is measured in joules, okay? Force is, remember, in newtons, and distance is in meters, all right? So the work done on this object is the same as the energy that has been transferred to this object. And the reason I chose this example, transferred, sorry, is because it should be obvious that this thing, first it was lying on the ground, so it doesn't really have a lot of energy going for it, all right? But if I lift it two meters up, I or some other stronger person than me, um, if, I, if you lift it up two meters, then now it's gained gravitational potential energy, right? Now it's above the ground, so it's gained potential energy. Well, where's that coming from? All right, remember energy is never created or, or, or destroyed. So the gain in potential energy must be, have been come from somewhere. And the idea is that, so the energy that has been transferred to this object, this object has gained 1200 joules of po gravitational potential energy. And every single joule of that comes from the work that is done by this person. So the work done on an object is the same as the energy that has been transferred to that object. So this object has experienced a gain um, of 1200 joules in the, in the gravitational potential energy because this man, person, has done 1200 joules worth of work on that dumbbell, all right? So that's the first key idea within the work done, all right? Um, so that, yeah. First thing. All right. Um, then the other thing is that when we talk, so when we talk about gravitational potential energy, all right, so I said this is lifted up two meters, all right, there's an equation for that, of course, and I'll come back to this example in just a second. All right, so GPE, which stands for gravitational potential energy, is equal to the mass of an object times G, which is the force due to gravity, times the height. So that means that it's m times g times eight. Height is in meters, mass is in kilograms, g is in um, meters per second squared, all right? Now, let's come back to this. So this object, all right, its mass is 60 kilograms, we know that. So if we're looking at what is the gain in GPE, all right? The mass is 60 kilograms, the g is 10, and the height is two meters. Hey, look at this, it's 1,200 joules. It's the same as the work that was done, all right? That's why the work done equals the energy transferred. That's, and, and this type of usage of it, you see all the time in the IGCSE, all right? So the work done is equal to the energy that's been transferred. And in this case, it's, it's a, the energy that's been transferred is, a, is shown by the gain in um, GPE. Now, the other type of energy we have a equation for is kinetic energy. 
right? And this is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. All right, so this stands for kinetic energy. Mass again in kilograms, velocity in meters per second. All right, and don't forget to square it. Um, and the idea for this is that, right, kinetic energy is all about movement. So if you don't have any velocity, then, you do, then the object doesn't have any kinetic energy and this whole thing will equal zero. All right. Um, and so what do I want to say about this? Yes. All right. So again, take, continuing with this example. So he has, we have lifted, whoever this is, has lifted it up two meters. We now have 1,200 joules of gravitational potential energy. Now, if he were to step back and drop that, ignoring air resistance, we live in a perfect world. We don't worry about air resistance right now, okay? But if he were to drop that, the idea is that as it falls, then it is going to lose gravitational potential energy because it's getting lower to the ground and it's going to pick up kinetic energy because it's moving and it's going to accelerate so it's going to move faster. So as it falls, it increases in kinetic energy and it decreases in G GPE. Now, the key for that is that at the very bottom, right before it hits the ground, okay, all of the GPE will have been transferred into kinetic energy. All right, so if I wanna know, well, how fast is this traveling right before it hits the ground, I could figure that out. Because I would say, all right, well, I know that it has 1200 joules of potential energy up here. And that means that at the very bottom, right before it hits the ground, but at elevation zero, all of that GPE is going to equal my kinetic energy. So I take my 1200 joules of potential energy that has now been converted into kinetic, and I do one half, the mass hasn't changed, it's still 60, and I'm going to multiply that the velocity squared, that's what I want, is the velocity. All right, so one half times 60 is 30, so I'm gonna get 1230 times V squared. I divide 1200 by 30, and I end up with 440, 400, 40. Um, this is a problem when you make up these numbers. on. And that is going to equal V squared. And then in order to find what is the velocity, I would take the square root of both of these. Um, and I actually don't know what that is. So let me, 6.3. So it'd be 6.3 meters per second would be how fast this is moving right as it hits the ground. All right, so that's um, what I wanted to do in this is give you not just an idea of the work done, but also how are these interrelated, right? So work done is equal to the energy transferred. Often that means that that's equal to the gain in GPE. And the idea is that, the, um, that GPE gets transferred into kinetic energy as the object is, falls or begins to fall or is dropped or anything like that. All right, so all of these concepts are closely related and it's really important that you understand how they are because the math on this becomes easy if you do, but without it, it's sometimes confusing. Uh, if you don't understand what the transfers in energy are and how they're related to each other, then it can be quite challenging. And the final thing that I wanna talk about before I leave this topic is power, all right? Yeah, power, let me see if I can fit it on this page just to try to save the page, okay? So the idea is that in lifting this, right, the work that's done on this is 1,200 joules. We've already established that. And it doesn't matter whether he does it fast or whether he does it slow, all right? Uh, the amount of work is the same. But if he does it slow, then that is going to affect the power that is needed, all right? So power is, and this equation is given to you, but power is the work done or the energy transferred, right? It could be either because those are the same thing. Um, divided by the time that's taken. So the idea is that if I have 1200 joules, right, then that's my work done. But depending on the time that it takes to do that, the amount of power could change. So the slower, right, the longer the amount of time, the larger this number, then the lower the power needed to lift it, okay? Um, if you're wondering why don't people just lift weights um, slower than it's, it's all about using the momentum of the object actually to get it up above your head in a clean jerk. Um, or if you don't work out and you don't understand what I'm saying, that's okay. I don't work out either. Um, I just know people who do. Anyway, and so the idea is that if the time is very small, then this power is going to be higher. And if the time is um, the longer the power, then the lower the power, sorry, the longer the time, the lower the power necessary to get something to move, right? So this is the last equation for this section.